Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is my second video but my first main one and I'm going to talk about the Android 8.0 Oreo update for the Nvidia Shield. It's also known as the Nvidia Shield Experience 7.0 I believe um, and it adds a bit of a new UI to the set top box. So this is the home screen that we're presented with when we enter the new update. Um, first things first, let's head over to settings uh, about your model shield Android TV model number and then version this is what we're after and there you go that's the Oreo so that's not 100% necessary but I always like to check out these direct just for a bit of fun and it is an Oreo bit of a weird colored one but what can you do okay so we're back on the home screen now and as you can see first up we've got our list of apps we've got BBC iPlayer Google Play Movies Netflix Prime Video and YouTube um, we can't add more to this list so I'm going to add Kodi and unlike the older update you can now move the apps and put them exactly in whichever order you prefer so I'll put Kodi there so now I can have everything in alphabetical order which is nice um, so next up we've got the play next section so this will add any TV or show or movie that you're in the middle of watching um, I'm not sure what apps it actually pulls this from because it's not pulled anything up yet even though it can show here on the Netflix channel that I am actually watching a few at the moment. Let's see if we can add one manually. Okay, so Netflix it says can't add to play next. Let's try another one on Netflix. Nope, can't add to play next either. But either way, it's got my um, Netflix shows that I'm in the middle of. So I'd imagine if I click on that, it will just jump me straight into it. And yep, it's looking like it's starting to load the show. And then we're back to the home screen. Um, I think you can you get rid of this it doesn't look like you can get rid of the play next which is a bit of a shame because it doesn't look like it's pulling anything through but never mind um, so next we've got up the YouTube channel um, so this is showing our recommended videos that you might want to watch on YouTube um, I've never really been a fan of the recommended section so it'd be nice to see if we can add something else there like subscriptions um, so down here we've got the BBC iPlayer they've got a channel as well um, this has got featured shows from iPlayer. Um, again, I wonder if there's a way to put your favourite shows here. Maybe see just see when they come up. But anyway, that's there. The UI is quite nice and fluid so far. And then we've got Google Play Movies here, and that's showing our featured movies again. So it's not bad. I guess it's a quick way of seeing what the latest movies are that Google recommends. Um, so you can see here down at the bottom we've got an option to customize the channels so let's see what we can do here okay so play next we can turn it off which is good but it does say you should select which apps are allowed to show programs in the play next channel and well Netflix is ticked so I wonder if I leave it if I'll leave it for a while see if it starts to populate stuff from Netflix um, so BBC I play you can see it's only got the one channel which is featured so I'll probably leave that one on Google Play Movies um, I'm not sure about featured, then maybe I'll have the, this one the top selling movies, so that looks more interesting. Netflix has just got the one channel, which is my recommendations. Spotify as well, there's got a channel, let's see what that one's about. Okay, so it's got music on there. Um, YouTube's got three channels. Ah, this is good. So you can turn off recommended and put subscriptions on. So that's perfect for me, so I can see my YouTube subscriptions straight from the home screen which is handy because that's one of the things I do the most is go through my YouTube subscriptions and watch the videos it doesn't seem like it's in chronological order though because as you can see it's showing videos from one week ago two days ago four days ago three days ago um, which so that's a bit annoying let's see if we click on it what does it do then? so clicking on it just opens the YouTube app rather than going straight into subscriptions you can see that if I go down to subscriptions that there is a lot newer videos than the ones that are showing up on the home screen so I'm not sure if these features are something I'm going to get much use out of I might end up turning them all off and just having my list of apps but we'll see how that goes so up here we've got our voice search and you can also type to search as well so let's give it a quick go Brooklyn Nine Nine. Okay, so you can see it brought up some information about the show, where I can watch it, so it knows that it's on Netflix, so I can go straight to the Netflix listing, or if I wanted to buy the episodes, 
or if I wanted to buy the episodes, I can go to Google Play. Um, so that's quite handy. Let's see if there's anything else that's new about the update. Um, so let's have a quick look through the settings menu. Um, so it looks like you can switch to Ethernet even if you have Wi Fi connected. Let's see if there's any other options. So so this is the networks menu. You can see the icons are live. They're showing that the different signal strength for the different networks. They're changing as we move. Um, you've got an Ethernet option, so you can switch to Ethernet even if you've got your Wi-Fi connected as well. Um, you've got some different options here for low power channels. Nothing too interesting there. So display settings. Um, it's still got the default recommended resolution of 4K at 59.940 hertz. This one's always been a weird one for me. I have no idea why the recommended one isn't quite a full 60 hertz. I'm sure someone will know the answer for that. Um, power control. See, there's anything. so you've got a few new options here. Um, you could always use HDMI, CEC, or infrared, but now it looks like you can do a few more things. So this one looks interesting. Keep shield awake on TV input switch. So I'm going to so I'm going to turn this one on because I was having a few problems on Android Nougat where if I had switched input for a long time and I went back to the shield it wouldn't come back on. Uh, volume control so we can still do either CEC or IR. I leave it on IR because I don't use my TV speakers so it's handy to have it on the remote just in case. Um, advanced settings. Nothing new here. It's all the same as it was before. Um, system. So you can still change the brightness of the LED on the shield, which is a nice touch. And you've got different performance modes. So you still got optimize or max performance. I guess optimizes if you're more concerned about the energy usage on the device, because obviously it doesn't have a battery. So I'd leave it on max performance all the time. Um, apps menu. So this isn't anything different. You'll go through your downloaded apps, similar to the apps menu on Android. And your system apps too. You've got your storage information, nothing new here. Screensaver, this is all the same pretty much. Uh, Google Cast, um, so that's just about crash usage data. So I'm actually going to turn that off. Uh, we already had a quick flip through about, but you can see it has the May security patch for Android, so it's fairly up to date. Um, Let's see what we've got home screen options. So you can customize the channels, you can turn off video previews and audio previews, reorder apps, reorder games, a couple of license stuff. You've got your accessory menu. That's it pretty much. Um, so overall, it's a kind of quite a nice update. I can see why Nvidia delayed it because to get the most use out of it, these channels features for the different apps do need to be full. And if they couldn't guarantee that people would be making them, then I can see why they've held it off and maybe made a few themselves. Um, I'll have to see over time whether this Play Next feature actually starts to <laughs> populate with stuff. Otherwise I may end up just turning them all off. Because I'm not a fan of algorithms that recommend stuff for me. I'd rather just watch what I want to watch. But generally it's a pretty good update to a pretty good streaming box and I'm quite happy with it. If you guys enjoyed the video please give me a thumbs up so I know that you're enjoying the content. And subscribe and stay tuned for more. Thanks.